Time is something humans have all been trying to figure out ever since the dawn of thought and time itself. It's something that occurs at every moment, shapes our existence, causes change, yet remains a mystery throughout our lives. No matter who you are, a philosopher, a president, or a regular citizen, time affects us all. The thing is, what if time, or at least as we know it, might not actually be real? Something that is nothing more than a social construct that doesn't exist outside our minds and culture. The ancient Greeks had two words for time, chronos and kairos. Chronos referring to chronological or sequential time, while kairos signifying a proper or opportune time for action. While chronos is quantitative, kairos is qualitative. It's the great difference between counting the hours of the day and making the hours count. Chronos is the first phase of time we encounter. It represents the version of time that ticks away, second by second, on the clocks and calendars that organize our lives. It is the time of science, of history, and of the progression from past to future. But Kronos is more than just a measure for the existence of an event, but it is the one thing that keeps most civilizations stable and societies at work. For example, the Egyptians aligning their pyramids with celestial events, or even today. Kronos dictates our routines, from our morning alarms telling us to wake up at a certain time to the deadlines we must overcome. The opposite of Kronos is Kairos, the second phase of time. Kairos is the opportune moment, the right or perfect time for action. Unlike the linear progression Kronos suggests, Kairos is subjective. It's about seizing the moment, recognizing the right time for a decision or action that can be measured by a clock or calendar. These moments of Kairos suggest time is not just a sequence, but a concept of opportunity. While Kronos structures our world, Kairos infuses it with meaning. Imagine Leonardo da Vinci. The years of practice and discipline set the reputation, but it's the moment of inspiration that defines a masterpiece like the Mona Lisa. In today's fast-paced world, our digital lives are controlled by Kronos, with every hour accounted for and every moment scheduled. Yet. It is those moments that we least expect, the Kairos moments, that often bring us the most joy and fulfillment. Throughout history, many philosophers have attempted to find out what time truly is, each offering a different viewpoint. The Greeks posed fundamental questions about time. Aristotle argued time's existence in relation to movement and change, contemplating whether time could exist without the soul to count it. For him, time was just a measure of change. What then is time? If no one asks me, I know. If I wish to explain it to someone who asks, I know not. For Augustine, time was a puzzle, an important aspect of the past, present, and future within the human mind, rather than an external entity. Although we are all aware of what time is, we don't actually know what it truly is. We know what it is until someone questions it. Augustine perceived time as a construct of the human mind challenging the notion of time as an external reality. Henri Bergson introduced the concept of la durée, or duration, explaining the experience of time as a continuous flow. Bergson's duration is about the qualitative experience of time, a continuous flow that can be dissected by clocks. Bergson argued that no two moments of la durée can ever be identical, for example, the arrival of a train at a particular moment of objective time is always the same, but our past feelings and memories influence our present experience of time, which is why certain moments can feel slower than others. The time spent from 3 to 4 p.m. or 8 to 9 p.m. is the same duration, but depending on what you're feeling or doing at that moment, it can shape how quick time passes. This is often why we find moments where we reach complete happiness, such as vacations, passed by much quicker than situations like being stuck in traffic or attending a class at school. Those who explore the issues of human existence, also known as existentialists, have a different viewpoint of time, particularly Martin Heidegger, who explored the concept of Dasein, which is our being in the world. He believed time is a fundamental aspect of existence, something that is deeply connected with our understanding of ourselves. Before Albert Einstein, time was viewed as something in which the events of the universe unfolded. In 1905, Einstein published his paper on special relativity, introducing a universe where the laws of physics are the same for all non-accelerating observers. 
An unexpected implication of his theory was the relativity of simultaneity. It suggests that events occurring simultaneously for one observer could happen at different times for another. However, Einstein wouldn't stop at special relativity, where later in 1915, he came up with the idea of general relativity. A theory that wove time and space into a single, dynamic fabric known as spacetime. This theory suggested massive objects like stars and planets warp the fabric of spacetime, creating what we perceive as gravity. Albert Einstein suggested that time is not a fixed stage in which events unfold, but a dimension that is linked with three dimensions of space. According to his theory of relativity, the distinction between the past, present, and future is only a stubbornly persistent illusion. Time, as we perceive it, may be an illusion, a construct of the human mind that holds no absolute existence in the universe. If time is simply a collection of moments, then the past, present, and future are equally real. This view known as eternalism suggests that time moves through different states of the universe's arrangements, rather than a single chronological timeline. Time is a flat circle. Everything we have done or will do, we will do over and over and over again, forever. Time challenges us to embrace the eternal recurrence, to live our lives as though we would be willing to live them again and again for all eternity. If we truly are stuck in a repeating cycle of the same occurrences, then why not make those events that do happen something we enjoy or are proud of doing? For example, will you be happy or proud of spending time on habits like scrolling on social media or watching TV shows? Well, it depends. Maybe you're watching TV shows with your family or a friend, so you might consider a great use of time. But if you're laying on your bed alone, indulging in countless of shorts, will you be happy? We should aim at living our lives in which we would want to live the next day, even if we do the exact same things. We should start making our hours count and be happy what we spend those hours on. We constantly fear wasting our time and feel our days passing by. We're the only species that measure our lives in years and decades or who make plans for a future we may never see. Our lives are temporary and death is an aspect we all must experience at some point, which is why we should act with urgency and meaning. This aspect of time compels us to seek purpose, legacy, and achieve accomplishments that last beyond our lifespans. It's not that we do not have enough time, but that we waste most of it. Every moment in which we live, our life shortens. That's why we must aim to do what makes us happy instead of wasting it on various pointless tasks. Most complain about not having enough time, but really, no matter what, you do have time. You just must prioritize certain tasks over others. Even Lao Tzu himself said, Time is a created thing. To say, I don't have time, is like saying, I don't want to. It isn't that you do not have enough time to spend on your family or work, but it's that you sacrifice it on something that you value more, or at least believe it does. The importance you attribute to your time determines how well you will prioritize the things you need to do to live a meaningful life. Marcus Aurelius, a Roman emperor who is one of the most powerful men of all time, suggests that aiming at living every moment in a way that it fulfills your purpose or life. He suggests spending every moment of the day on serving a common good for society or achieving your goals. To not waste it on something useless, but something great. Marcus Aurelius values the present moment highly and believes it is one of the greatest abilities. Time, in the grand scale of eternity, is a brief moment. Therefore, we must stop worrying about the future or regretting the past, but act effectively and productively in the present. Do not dwell on the past, do not dream of the future, concentrating the mind on the present moment. Perhaps, the most important aspect of time is making peace with it. Understanding that while we cannot control it, we can control our experience of it. We can choose to live in the moment, to appreciate the now, and to let go of past regrets and future anxieties. Life is about being open to new opportunities and finding beauty or gratitude in the present while letting go of imagined scenarios and what-ifs that often could cloud our brains with overthinking, preventing us from engaging in the present. Choosing to make peace with time isn't just about choosing to live in the moment, but engaging with life itself. 
we must appreciate both the little and large achievements in life instead of taking them for granted. We must learn to be grateful for daily experiences such as having a conversation with your dad or grandparents since one day you might no longer have the ability to. Making peace with time involves a conscious decision to let go of certain events that keep reminding us of the future or past. The only true moment we ever experience is the present one, and it is the only one that can help us find the power to shape our lives and create fulfillment or peace within ourselves. Time is not merely a measure, but a fundamental aspect of the universe, a dimension that we navigate daily. Time present and time past are both perhaps present and time future, and time future contained in time past.